What is going on, everyone? I am here today with a very good friend of mine named Holly Homer. Holly and I met drinking old fashions on a cruise when she told me that she had a daily Facebook Live that got over a hundred thousand views. And I was just like, we were like, I was mid sip and I almost spit out my Manhattan. <laughs> I feel like we should probably say that it was probably almost midnight. I think it was after. Um, on the last night of the cruise, too. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty crazy. Um, but anyway, I am super excited to have her on the show. She um, she is one of, like, the more I started talking to her, the more I learned. Um, she has one of the largest red blogs uh, for kids on the internet. Completely didn't know that. <laughs> Ran a Facebook Live to hundreds of thousands of people daily. Also lives in Texas, the great country of Texas. The great country of Texas. So Holly, welcome to the show. Thanks so much. It's so good to be here. I know we, I feel like we do this all the time. We just don't usually record it. <laughs> it's very true. So Holly, the thing that I think I learned about you when, after we, after I'd heard all these great things, you were like, yeah, but I didn't even know how to send an email. And no. that's what started this whole thing. So I'm going to let you kind of tell us, like, you didn't know how to send an email and then suddenly your big blogger, all this stuff. Tell us about it. Yeah. Um, and I want to I preface this by saying that my brother is like computer, like he does internet security. So our whole life, he's been like the tech guy. And then I've been like the person that can't even like turn on like the dishwasher. And then um, all of a sudden we... We get, we get um, his, the high school that, that his daughter went to asked us both to be um, representatives at like career day in the tech field. <laughs> That's awesome. How did and you he, take that? He, not well, not well at all. In fact, we presented together and he was just like, at, he was just like walking out like, I can't even believe like, like this should be beat me and they all want to be bloggers. <laughs> so. That's awesome. So the good news is there is no experience necessary for anything I'm about to say. <laughs> so. I love it because I know so many people are, are super intimidated. Oh my goodness, I have to build a website. Even like the builders now are super easy. They're drag and drop, but yeah. it's still like, it's crazy. I walked through somebody buying a URL the other day and like how to install WordPress. Right. And they were just like, oh my goodness. So tell us a little bit. Give us a, give us. Well, and the thing is, is I've never installed WordPress. <laughs> so you can do this without any of that. So anyway, back in the olden days. Um, so uh, I was a physical therapist. Um, I, um, I got my master's degree in physical therapy. I was, you know, so I had been like in the science fields and I love all things science and numbers and, and um, I had, I had a real interest in um, gross anatomy. In fact, I had taught um, in the gross anatomy cadaver lab. <laughs> and I mean, like, so like I was really entrenched. I loved what I did. I specialized in chronic pain. And so I really had, um, I don't know, it was just really fun to work with these people who were just like in pain and then had lost everything. So, because we could make, um, you know, we could make their lives better really quickly. So that was kind of the background. And I was doing all that while my husband was in um, medical school and then um, an internship and then residency and then Air Force payback. And so the whole time I was like, um, someday, you're going to support the family. <laughs> and we didn't have kids at the time. And I'm going to be a stay at home mom. And so when we had kids, um, I, you know, stayed home with them. And, um, and I found myself like, you know, I had had a career of 10 years and all the time I'm at home with little kids. No one was listening to me. No one cared what I had to say. Whereas like when I was a physical therapist, people were like, let's see what Holly has to say about that, you know? Um, so it's really funny. I just got, you know, kind of like, you know, you've heard that like, oh, you know, you kind of like lose like yourself or what, you know, where, what you're all about. And it kind of was frustrating to me because I had always wanted to do this. And then all of a sudden I'm like, oh my gosh, like, why did I always want to do this? You know, you kind of fill yourself into a situation that you created. So, um, a friend of mine and I had been emailing 
but my husband had been downloading my emails every, you know, <laughs> I now know that he was like basically opening up the computer, but I didn't know that back then. <laughs> Hang on. And, when you say he was opening it, tell me what you mean. Like you didn't know how to read your emails. I, well, I didn't know how they came into the machine. Like I had one of those, you remember those old bios? The, like, the, the, they were like so small for the time. Like it was like the laptop that was tiny and they were like the size of like a book, but they were like super thick. Yeah, I totally remember that. So he had gotten me one of those because it was pretty plug and play for, you know, and he's like, you can get like, you know, basically this is how you're going to get your emails. Cause I thought he did something, you know, very complicated behind the scenes to get the emails to open and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. But in my defense, like up until recently to turn, you know, like, like the buttons on a computer were never like on off. Like it was like, Oh, you, you turn it off by hitting the on button. That doesn't make sense. I mean, like, <laughs> this is why you write a kid's activities blog. Yes. This is why no one's put me in charge. Well, they should put me in charge of user like integration because I could tell them a few things. But anyway, you can see that I was not the most tech savvy person in the world. And I had been emailing a friend who had boys the same age as my older boys. Um, and kind of like, you know, like these, like, hey, you get it, let's chat about, and they were kind of really long emails. And they were, we'd go back once a, once a week, usually on a Saturday morning. And this had been going on for about a year. And it was really like helpful for me to kind of write that stuff, you know, and then, you know, we were never really solving problems, but it was just nice to have them bounced off of someone else. And this is, you know, this is pre Facebook, pre all the social media and stuff like that. So this was kind of new to be able to connect with someone across the country um, that you didn't see. So that was pretty cool. And then one morning I open up her like, email and the subject line is, I think we need to stop emailing. And I was like, no. How's that for a hook? <laughs> yeah. Really good hook, by the way. Yeah. Subject line. Um, I might need to add that tonight. Um, so, so anyway, and I was like, what? Like, no. And I opened up the email and she said, um, we need to start blogs. And this was, this is over 15 years ago. So we need to start blogs. And she explained that a blog was a place that you, we, like she could write her email and I could write my email on, on each of our blogs. And then we could go visit each other blogs. And she justified this in saying that she was emailing another girl. I wasn't even her only one. And that, so that way we would have three people that could go and she goes, you can get to know her through the, you know, through the blog and, and all that kind of stuff. So I was like, okay. And she like, go to blogspot.com and open up and start a blog. So I went to blogspot.com, which is basically a form. And for those of you not blogging, you can still do this today for free in about 10 minutes and become a blogger just like me. Um, so I filled out the fields and, and I was a blogger. I, but mind you, I never read a blog. Didn't know what a blog was. <laughs> but here I have a blog. And so I got in behind and I was like, you know, oh, I can upload pictures. <laughs> So I was like putting pictures and I was like, this is going to be amazing because I was like really deep into the scrapbooking um, world, which meant I was spending hundreds of dollars a month on scrapbooking supplies and um, making multiple versions of the scrapbook. So I could send one to grandma and one to auntie and all that kind of stuff. So then the next thought was, oh my gosh, this is going to save me so much money because I'm just going to put the pictures and the little stories on the internet <laughs> and then um and then you know like i won't have to pay for all that stuff so so that's how i started so i started with my friend jody my mother and my great aunt all as my readers i had three readers and um about three weeks in like i got a comment on one of my blog posts that wasn't my mother wasn't jody and wasn't my great aunt and i was like what and her name was Megan. And I clicked on Megan's name because it was like a different color. And Megan had a blog too. <laughs> Other people did this. <laughs> and so when I went to Megan's blog, I realized that Megan not only blogged, and she, by the way, she had boys just like I did. And she was doing kind of the same thing I was, but she had a blog role in the sidebar 
because we're dinosaurs yeah. on the internet. And so I was like, what? I mean, like this was like a pivotal moment in my life, realizing that other people blog. I Now I think back, I do not know how I thought Blogspot stayed in business with me being the only blogger, but. <laughs> but you didn't think about that. You were just like, I don't have to download my emails. <laughs> I don't have to, this is easier. It's, it's, it's important. So I started going through Megan's blog role and just finding the most amazing people just like me who were kind of writing. You found your tribe. I you found, found other tribe. moms. I found other moms. And it was so much like what Jody and I had been, you know, writing back and forth in email, but, you know, and because this was all pre-social media, it was so like, it was like our community, like you would have your, your top 50 friends and you'd go to their blog every morning and read whatever they had written the day before and leave a comment. And, and it was our community. And I mean, some of the, like Megan, I, I know Megan. Um, and, um, and then these, um, all these, these blogs that were in her blog role are some of my dearest friends today. And so it was just crazy to find this on the internet. And so Fast forward, you know, a um, couple years when I kind of like realized that this could turn into a business is I just really wanted to recreate that community that I want, that I needed at that time for other people in a way. And that's how, you know, kind of how Kids Activities blog and, and everything I've written and created over the years um, was kind of in that point is I found what I needed and I just wanted to make sure that other people find the same thing. So I want to pull a skeleton out of the closet, Holly. Oh. <laughs> Can you tell us about pajama jeans? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so for those of you who don't know, Holly is about to tell you how her life changed. <laughs> this is another pivotal moment. Um, so, um, so I was writing just a blog and, um, and at that back, and this is many years ago, back what, before, there wasn't really any bloggers that were making money. Like there was were this people, like, was this like six months in a year in how long had you been? It blogging? was probably a couple, maybe two years. Um, it, it, yeah. I mean, I, I could probably figure it out by the, you know, the timing of, of, of the pajama jeans that I'm about to tell about, but yeah, it was several years in, but you have to remember, like I went into this as, Hey, I'm like, I'm emailing a friend. Like, like I didn't ever think, Oh, this you weren't is doing it to make money. I was well, nobody was. Yeah, you were just telling just, a story. Yeah, I was just telling a story. It's kind of a hobby, you know. Um, it was my community. It was kind of my yeah. It's just like my hobby kind of thing. So, um, my husband and I, um, we were just laying in bed one night, and we kind of like to watch like the as seen on TV products, like the infomercials. And um, so we're just bored, laying in bed, and watching um, the pajama jean um, infomercial, which is like you know. 30 minutes of pajama jean goodness. And um, so pajama jeans, for those of you who don't know, they look like jeans, but they feel like pajamas. I mean, like what more could you ask out of life? And so this whole infomercial was just over the top. Like, you know, these just, uh, you know, people whose lives had been changed by pajama jeans, a little foreshadowing there. All those Walmart shoppers. All those Walmart shoppers. And so at, by the end of the commercial, my husband was just laughing because he's like, you want pajama jeans. I'm like, no, I don't. I absolutely do not want pajama jeans. And he's like, he goes, well, he goes, you could buy them and then write about them on your blog. And he goes, you could, that would, could even be a business expense. And I was like, what? <laughs> like, what is this magical thing where I can shop? and pretend like it's business, you know? So, so um, I went through the process of purchasing pajama jeans in, you know, to write about them on my blog. Cause I thought, well, if I find it interesting, I think it's hysterical, like, you know, and most of the stuff I wrote was trying to be a little funny or something like that. Um, so I was like, this could be really funny. So I got pajama jeans in, you know, a couple weeks later and um, I didn't hate them as much as I thought I would, but they were not something I've never worn them in. Well, I've worn them in public once, but it was because they were pajama jeans. And, um, and so like I got them and then I thought, well, 
you know, I kind of want to write the blog post about kind of why I bought it. So, so like I took the kind of the infomercial and I found the YouTube video on YouTube and embedded it in blog posts. And then I was like, you know, um, I took every line of their major, you know, say, um, selling points. Um, and I kind of counteract it with my own. So like, you know, looks like jeans. And then I put my little two cents in and then it like feels like pajamas. And I put my, so it was basically, um, what I was doing unknowingly was crafting one of the best search engine optimized posts of all time. Interesting. <laughs> I had no idea. Uh, I didn't even know what that meant. So I just wrote this thing about pajama jeans and how like they're kind of ridiculous. And then, um, and then, you know, I was just laughing about it, P posted a picture of myself in the pajama jeans and posted it. And my readers thought it was hysterical. Like it was like, you know, I became the pajama jean girl. Um, like they all thought it was super funny. I started doing other as seen on TV products because this had gone so well. And then, um, and then I noticed that like, and this is back in the olden days of blogging where like traffic was not even something we even thought about that much. And like, I might get maybe, you know, 10,000 blog, blog views in a month. Um, but all of a sudden I was getting hundreds of thousands of blog post views on the pajama jeans um, um, uh, post. And I was like, that's really weird. I wonder where that traffic is coming from. And so I looked into it and realized that it was coming from Google. Google was sending me all sorts of traffic every single day on uh, for pajama jeans. And then I like was like, oh my gosh, if I have traffic, I need to put up some ads. So like I put up because I didn't even have ads on my blog. So I put up some blog some blog ads because um there was a at that time there was you had to get to a hundred dollar threshold to be paid out for Google ads. And like you know, that would have been four years prior to pajama jeans. So I was like, Oh my gosh, I might, might make it in a, in a month or two, you know, you know, to bring in, I had no idea. And then, um, I realized that the re one of the reasons why that this was so, so many people were Googling about pajama jeans is because they pajama jeans had been like brought in to that pajama gram company that does all those holiday ads. And so they, Pajamagram was running a radio um, push on all the radio stations about how you need to, like pajama uh, jeans are the best holiday gift. So what people were doing was hearing it on the radio, going and Googling it, and then ending up, because I was like the only one that said review, I didn't even have the word review, but basically, it was my experience with pajama jeans. So people were like, oh, well, I want to go read that before I buy pajama jeans. So I was like, and I was on the front page of Google for multiple different keyword phrases for pajama jeans. I just didn't know what that meant at that time. But then, so I was getting all this traffic and I'm really happy because I'm like, you know, I'm probably even making, you know, like $3 a day on ads now. And, um, and then I got an email from the affiliate company that was running a pajama jeans. And they said to me, you could put this little, um, this little banner ad at the end of your um, blog post that would sell pajama jeans. And then we will give you $11 per pair of a pajama jeans that you sell. I was like, whoa, that's crazy. And then I thought, oh, like, I can't do that. Like, that would be like selling my soul because I don't really like pajama jeans. And like I did, I was like, I can't sell something I don't like. So I had this like moral crisis. And then I thought, well, you know, like my blog post wasn't really that glowing. So I thought, well, I will read through the blog post again and just, you know, see what. And so I read through the blog post again, kind of with like these eyes of someone who never read through it. And I thought, if someone still wants to buy pajama jeans after reading my article, I definitely should profit from that. <laughs> and so I installed the, um, because it just wasn't, it was like, these are kind of stuff. I was, it was kind of like my so I installed the banner and all of a sudden I started selling between 10 and 15 pairs of pajama jeans a day. 
all the way through the holidays. (laughs) And it was crazy because I'd never made any money. And all of a sudden I'm making hundreds of dollars a day. And so, um, and, but like, I knew that like pajama gram was going to like, when we get through the holidays, it would end because, you know, people wouldn't be looking for them, but pajama gram is so smart. They decided after Christmas is over that the best gift for your sweetheart for Valentine's day was pajama jeans. So here I go back up and I'm just like selling pajama jeans every single day, all the way through Valentine's day. When I was like, Oh man, now Valentine's Day is all over. But then Pajama Graham decided that the only way to show your mother <laughs> that you loved her was to buy pajama jeans for Mother's Day. So then I went back up all the way through Mother's Day. So I hit three major holidays um, with my pajama jean money. And I amassed almost the exact amount of money that I needed to buy what is now Kids Activities Blog. Um, and so basically my whole empire on the internet is thanks to pajama jeans. (laughs) That's where it all started. So your husband was a doctor. Greg was a doctor. Pajama jeans goes well. You get kids activity blog. Mm -hmm. Kids activity blog starts going and you're realizing like you're a smart woman. Light bulb goes on over your head and you're like, I can make money doing this. And what I want to point out about what you said, you didn't love pajama jeans. You didn't write a wide lying review that Mm -hmm. made them glow when you didn't believe in it, which I so appreciate. Like authenticity, transparency is really important to me. But if people still buy after reading it, you're not doing... Those are the type of people I need to take their money from. (laughs) I mean, you're not even taking their money. They read it and they're like, you know what? She said something that made me still want to buy it or I still believe in it. They're getting information from you that's honest information and they're acting on it. So you don't, if you're listening to this and you're like, well, I don't know if I could do that. One, there are a million products out there that you can be an affiliate for Mm -hmm. and write about. So eventually Greg quit his job how how long would you say after the from like pajama jeans to kids activity blog and then greg leaving his job as a doctor probably six years maybe in the middle of there um i'd have to really go back and look at you know i had like you know when when i started all of this it was i was writing every day because that was important to me um but it was like i was spending you know 30 minutes a day or something like that on all of this. And, um, and I had really tiny kids. And so like, you know, just the whole, like not even thinking that it was like, you don't pay attention to stuff. You don't think you're going to, you know, be life changing. And so it's kind of mushy for the first, you know, probably five years of all of this as to when things actually happened and stuff, because I was just like, it was just a hobby. And then as I started getting, and this really kind of dawned on me when I was getting really bad pitches via email, you know, Hey, write about this, you know, and they never had, any, and this is in the early days and they never had any, because of this, it was just like, you were a blogger, you need to write about this. And I thought, you know, if someone's paying people to start to write to bloggers to, and of course, none of these people had ever read my blog or knew what I wrote about. And they were all stupid, like, you know, things I'd never write about. But I was like, if someone's paying someone to do that, there must be something of value in this that I'm not realizing. And so I started, um, you know, kind of watching and, and, um, and, you know, I don't know if I told you about the local hair, um, hair place that, that kind of, you know, started this whole thing for me is, is I wrote about, and by the way, back in these early days, I wrote anonymously, like we like there wasn't Facebook and Twitter and stuff that where we had to put our names behind. It wasn't until I joined Facebook that I actually put my name behind my words. And so like it was anonymous. People didn't really know where I lived and all that kind of stuff. But I wrote about a hair salon, a new hair salon in town that I really liked. Um, it makes me feel stupid. And, um, and you know, I actually, the whole thing was about how beautiful their tile was and stuff like that. And, and, um, when I went back a month later, the owner said, Holly, I want to buy advertising on your blog. And I was like, that seems like a waste of money. Like, number one, I don't know if I have anybody in this area that even reads my blog. Number two, like, I have no idea, like, what that would look like, you know. 
And she said, no, like we got three new customers from your blog post. I was like, but I didn't even like, I didn't even mention the name of the salon. This, I mean, like people had pieced it together by my words, but hadn't like, but she had had, she had seen customers. And so she had said at that time, it's really hard. The only choice for a local business is to buy Google AdWords. Like there's nowhere else to advertise. And so that got me thinking. And I started like a blog for um, Dallas moms called she is Dallas. And I did a bunch of other projects. Um, and this, this empire that you see today, I like, I had, I started and failed at, you know, I had 17 different projects over these years, um, like major blogs or websites or, or things that I was doing and all of them failed except for, um, basically kids activities blog and another one or two that are much smaller. But, um, I think that's important for people to understand like this overnight success in 15 years you know, came at the cost of me, like creating a website for two or three years that I just thought was going to save the world and then having to shut it down because we, you know, we couldn't pay the bills and stuff like that. So while all of this, I was learning through those stages to, you know, to finally do what, what I'm doing on kids activities blog, but um, it was, there was a lot of craziness when in, an, in, in, in our defense in the early years, we didn't know what a blog business would look like. We were trying to make it up. Well, if somebody, so I, I want to switch gears a little bit. I want to actually talk about blogging, the science of it and the business behind it. Um, the first question I would have, if a listener is listening to this right now and they're like, well, you started 15 years ago and it took you, it took you five years before you started to see mild success, 10 years before you, you, before Greg quit his job and, and you were doing it full time and making really good money at it. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, I mean, Tony Robbins has a quote that it's like people grossly overestimate what they can do in a year and underestimate what they can do in yeah. 10. And that's, I mean, it's, I've been in business for six years. The first two years I struggled like crazy before I really gained any traction. And that like, even then, like it's been a battle uphill every day. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's, I mean, I'm mildly successful now. I can pay all the bills. And I don't have to worry, but it's not, I'm not not a millionaire, right? We're anyway, cajillionaires laying on the beach somewhere. Well, I think what's I wrong mean, with you, us? <laughs> well, I think you see all the social media out there and you know, you see like, I mean, Gary Vee's pretty honest, but mm -hmm. he's also like, just put out 60 pieces of content a day and grind, 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 hustle, hustle, hustle. Well, yeah, for 10 years, plan on doing it for at least five. But my question yeah. coming back to that rant aside is, <laughs> If somebody were looking at this and they're like, well, you started 15 years ago. I mean, blogging was a different thing. Now you type something into Google, like all the good search terms are taken, or I don't know that I would ever gain any traction. What's a realistic expectation? Hey, thanks for taking a moment to check out this episode of Grow Your Impact, Income, and Influence, the number one show helping you reach millions. Have you ever thought about building your own webinar or using public speaking to reach your ideal audience? Well, if you'd like my help with it, over the last several years, I have built more than 40 live events for clients just like you. In the last 18 months, I've helped 32 entrepreneurs build their webinar with over $5 million in cumulative sales. If you'd like to see how I can work with you, or if you'd be interested in having me speak at your event or be on your podcast, go to steven.coffee, that's S-T-E-V-E-N dot C-O-F-F-E-E, -E, to book a short call with me and see how we can work together. All right, let's jump back to the episode. Yeah, so the good news is, is um, everything's out there right now for you to know exactly what to do. Um, and so it's short, it can make your path so much shorter than, than mine. In, when I started blogging, there was no blogger instruction. You couldn't go to Google and say how to start a blog or how to install a, a button in your sidebar or how to do this. There, nobody that, 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 you know, that knowledge didn't exist yet. In fact, it was basically those of us behind the scenes when you, you go to somebody's blog and they're like, Oh, they put an image that you can click on. What? You know, like that, like that person got 10 emails within 20 minutes saying, how did you do that? 
you know, and, and, you know, I, I hung out, I hang out with nice people on the internet. So she would like send me the, like, this is what I did. And that's how we learned how to do these things. You know, like it, we would see it on someone else. And if they were nice enough to share how they did it, then we would do it. But there was no Googling or, or blog, how to start a blog or blogger education 101 or, or SEO or any of that stuff that just didn't exist. Um, so the good news is today that like, you don't have to invent this. Like it's the, it's also the, the bad part of it is we didn't know what it was supposed to look like. We just put out the stuff that we thought was good stuff or, or we didn't even really care. We were just putting stuff out there and there was no judgment of it because, you know, there was no, there was no standard. And whereas today, I think that's something that like people will, oh, I have to do it this way because no, like you get to choose your blog is your real estate in the world. So no matter what anyone else is doing, you get to choose what to do on your blog. It doesn't have to look, in fact, I, I, I would say you're better off if it doesn't look like everybody else's stuff like that. So there's that, you know, there's a really good, you know, um, thing that there's a lot more information out there. Um, there's also the ability to really, you know, I have 13,000 blog posts on Kids Activities blog. That's because I didn't know what I was doing. Um, if I was going to, if I was going to start kids activities blog from scratch today, I would probably need about 250 blog posts that are exactly these, you know, uh, and I know that today, but it took me 13,000 to come up with the 250 that are doing really well. So, um, that is when you find like that knowledge base, like I have a, uh, one of my coaching clients, um, she started a blog about 18 months ago and um, it has 200 blog posts and it's doing really well. Um, you know, and that was, we're talking 18 months versus, you know, 13, 12. Yeah. I would say it probably took me maybe 10 years to get, you know, successful and then, and then 13 to get wildly successful. Um, awesome. So, so there's, there's a lot, there's a lot of ways to short circuit that now um, in a way that wasn't possible way back when we didn't even know what the hell we were doing. I mean, yeah. I would agree with that. I see people, I mean, I think SEO is coming back because what's the first thing, if you see something on social media, you Google it. Mm -hmm. You usually look for a review of it. You can't trust Amazon reviews anymore. So you're like, who has a review? Who has something to say about XYZ? Just like your pajama jeans story, mm -hmm. only that's a gazillion times a day now. Mm -hmm. um, if you write good articles. And so let's actually talk about, I want to get into the nuts and bolts. Mm -hmm. If somebody is, let's say they have a business, a coaching business or consulting business or some kind of influencer business. And they're like, well, I post all the time on Facebook. What should they be doing with a blog to supplement that? And do you have to be a good writer? You like, I was in the science lab while everyone else was learning creative writing. So I do think like, First of all, I will step back a minute and say a blog these days it covers any sort of content. So you, I mean, it could be written word, it could be videos, it could be a combination, it could be photos and you know blurbs and all that kind of stuff. Like you get to decide what's on your blog. Um, but the problem with always relying on social media for your kind of what I would say your home base or for people to find you is that you can never tell the whole story there because it's not your land. You're renting that land or stealing that land or I don't know, like it's borrowed time, it's borrowed land. Yeah. <laughs> and so, and by the way, that's how they treat you is they know that they can rip the, you know, they rip the rug out from under you at any moment and they will threaten that. Um, they will change things that are not good for you um, and without notice, they will, you know, they will squash you. They will call you fake news. They will do all these things to you because you, you on their platform is no big deal. Like they, they have plenty of plenty where the, you came from. And so that's one of the reasons why I think it's so, so important for us to have our own like real estate on the internet. And so whatever you, whatever that looks like for you, maybe it's a hub of a bunch of videos, or maybe it is written word, or maybe it is a collection of your social posts, just put them somewhere where they're all together. 
that can also lead people to like, know, and trust you and then realize that you're smart. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so, and that's the, like, what Facebook is so good at is like, is reaching out to people who don't know you and increasing your like, no trust factor, but it's really bad at allowing you to sell something on it unless you're paying them money. So you can see, well, that's why you need to figure out how to get those people from that social network that won't let you make the money to a place where you can have them and make the money. And the same thing I'd say with YouTube and, and um, Twitter and Instagram, Instagram's probably the worst at this because they won't even let you put a link in there. So Instagram is pure like no trust with no ability to do anything else. Um, and, but the good news is if you have a really engaged Instagram following, they're, they are um, willing to jump through hoops to get to where you're monetizing. But if you have just kind of a lukewarm following on Instagram, it's, it's generally worthless to you, quite honestly. Um, you're better off where you can put a link and have actually someone come through and, and find the whole story because you're only able to show a small part of the story on these social networks. So let's talk about the blog post. So first off, what's the difference between what you're talking about? Because what you're talking about to me is a website, a personal mm -hmm. brand website. I think some people think blog and they're like, that just means I have to write like 1500 words a day. And I actually like your definition of it a whole lot better. Your heart. <laughs> um, so, I mean, a website, building your own website is yeah. basically today's 2020 blog. Yeah. What, what are the key? Cause I know you've walked it, walked me through it. Yeah. What are the key things that you need to do? If somebody's like, I don't know if I have time for that or why is it important? We covered why it's important because mm -hmm. people are going to search for you. Yeah. They're going to search off of Facebook or Instagram if you're trying to sell them something. Tell them the whole story. But then what, what do they need to know? Like if I'm looking to write a blog post, what's like, give me like some nuts and bolts tactics that I can use to write a good post that is both mm -hmm. congruent with who I am and gets found by the search engines. Yeah, so I really look at, um, and you know, I'm going to use the word blogger, but anybody who's a content creator or an influencer, really our job is to connect the dots. So if I'm writing a piece of content, I need to connect enough dots so that Google knows what it's talking about. And that's called, you know, search engine optimization or SEO. And then, you know, I also need to connect the dots for my reader so that they know what the heck I'm talking about and why it's important to them or how it could change their lives. And kind of, cause we don't just go out and write stuff for no reason. Like, you know, we, you know, we have a product or a service or something that we're selling, or, you know, we have a mission, um, you know, on kids activities blog, you think, well, you don't really, you didn't have a product or a service till recently. Yeah. But I had a mission for of like, you know, creating this community for, for um, that surrounds play and how the tradition of play and, and how play is important to even modern children. And so, you know, there was that storyline that I was, I was talking about. Um, but like, if you are someone who's selling a service or selling a product is one of the ways that a blog or a website, and I'm going to use those words interchangeably, because I think in 2020, 2021, there is no difference. Like that's the right. same thing. Um, is that you're connecting the dots. So let's say um, you have a, you're selling widgets and you have a funnel. Um, so you're putting in Facebook ads to send people to this widget funnel that starts here. Well, what I would say is a lot better um, and a lot cheaper for you to do is to create a layer of content above that funnel. So what, do, what are all the questions that people ask that can be answered by your widget? So, um, you know, like, well, people ask this or a certain type of person asks this. Well, that's where your blog post comes in. You're going to talk straight to that person and you're going to be like, hey, like, I don't know if you realize this, but this is a problem. Here's some solutions. And oh, by the way, like I have this here and you're sending them into your funnel. But instead of making 17 funnels for 17 different groups or different, you know, things, so what you're going to do is use that same funnel, but start the funnel on different content pieces. Um, and 
we all have seen the, how, how expensive it is to acquire a customer through Facebook ads. Well, Facebook will send content, traffic to content for pennies compared to dollars and tens of dollars and hundreds of dollars so for customer acquisition. Tell me what that means because this was, this was like the game changing moment for me that like it was an aha. Tell me what you mean by that. How do you get people to your content for pennies? So, the, you know how Facebook and Pinterest and all these social, Google even, where they're like, oh, we want you to pay to play. You know, you heard that Facebook pay to play, Facebook pay to play. A lot of times people think about that is, oh, on your Facebook page, you have to pay to play. No, basically what Facebook's saying is, if you're making money off of Facebook, we want to cut. So we want, we, anything that's promotional, we want to, we want you to pay for. And so that's where Facebook ads come into. That's where, like, if you post something promotional on Facebook, how the reach just goes like this. And you're like, organic reach is dead. Yes, for promotional things on Facebook or any social network, promotional posts are dead. Organic traffic for promotions are dead. You know, 10 years or five years ago, it wasn't like that. But today it is. So, you know, they say organic reach zero. Well, yes, for promotional products. But I got a million page views on my blog last month from Facebook organically. So there's still ways to play in the content space as long as it's not overtly promotional. So when you create a content piece that is helpful to people, number one, it's a way better way to stop, um, stop someone's scroll when they're like, oh, I had that question the other day or, oh, that sounds like me or, oh, I have that problem is so you're creating a piece of content that connects with somebody because they have that problem too. They're just like you. They have these issues as well. So they come in and they read that piece and then they're like, they're like more connected to you because you pointed out something that they can solve or maybe that they commiserated, you commiserated with them or something like that. Well, just now, do you see what happened on Facebook? You posted a content piece that all of a sudden, instead of everybody running away from Facebook in the opposite direction, like a promotional piece would be, is all of a sudden, maybe even your friend like clicked on it or like they left a comment or they shared it. All, it's a shareable piece of content. It solves problems. It, it shows engagement. So now you go to Facebook um, and like this is kind of like the tale of two posts. You have like the promotional salesy post that sends them straight to the funnel and you have the content solution based post that's a content piece. And so this, when you boost it, it already has some engagement. Facebook saw that people slowed the scroll, even if they didn't act on it, they, they like paused over it. It wasn't like a, like a flick through like a promotional piece would be. And so it's already primed to be cheaper to boost and so and and then like there's you know they are going to go look at the url of where these things live this is one of the reasons why i beg people do not put your website or blog on a e-commerce site or or funnel platform because the url is going to tell the the <laughs> google or facebook that oh yeah this is content but it's really not content. But if you send them to a blog, like a web or a website that is self-hosted or on a, like a platform like Medium or some of these others, that's a content platform, it shows intent to inform. And so sending, and if you just do this alone, you could do the same article on a, like a ClickFunnels URL versus a WordPress URL. And I, it, even if it was exactly the same piece, I would say that you would get the, the page views for that, um, for that WordPress pennies compared to dollars for the ClickFunnels. And it's just because like, if you just were- Just because of intent. Just because of intent. And because if you were an, I mean, we have to look at the way these, um, these platforms are created. If you were an algorithm and you were trying to get rid of promotional things, What's one thing that's super easy for them to do? Oh, what's the URL? Oh, hey, that's a, that's a monetized site. Probably, you know, probably have a monetized, you know, intention. They can pay our ad costs. Yeah. <laughs> like, 
they're good for 10 bucks a person. <laughs> so you're talking about building content. Um, you have, I mean, that was when I met you, you were just like, yeah, we just decided to do Facebook lives for three hours a night and build content. Mm -hmm. But then when we were talking about content for a website, I mean, I'm really good on video. I can write, but it takes me a long time. And you were like, so just do video snippets and put some description of the video that you write, but it doesn't have to be crazy. You said you told me like 300 words, maybe. Yeah. Um, I mean, especially if you're going to put a piece of like a, if you're embedding a video or something like that, you might even be embedding the transcript or adding the transcript to the video underneath. So that's a lot of words on that page. One of the things that I would do if you're not a writer, but you want, you have some video content is go ahead and embed that, maybe put the transcript below, but then just do a little chatty intro of why you're talking about this. I mean, and what's so cool about Google these days is once Google figures out that you're not just started something that you're going to leave and turn around and run away and abandon like 95% of the people on the internet have done. So that's why it usually takes about two to three months to get settled into Google even caring about what you're doing at all, which is good because you can, that gives you time to get some content library around, around your subjects is that, is that it's really getting a lot better at um, figuring out like real world stuff versus key words. You know, the big buzzwords for, for SEO for all these years is primary keyword and secondary keyword and key, you know, in the olden days, we, they would keyword stuff because whoever used the keyword the most times in any given, you know, post would win. You, I go Thankfully. back and I go back and look at those posts where it's like, I, I'm trying to think of something I searched the other day that it was just obnoxious. Right. Like they just crammed it in. So you're saying that you don't have to do that anymore. You don't, which is great for those of us who are creating like normal content for normal humans, because that piece of content with keyword stuffing, that doesn't help your reader. Like, and right. Google's like good about that. So what's Google is really good at doing right now is looking for context. So if you're talking, and I think we did this with you the other day with like social selling, what are words around social selling? Like what, like what are phrases, what are, what are thing, common things that are associated with selling, social? Well, you know, it's easy to, when we're just talking about it. Oh yeah, well social, well that would be social media. Well that'd be like platforms like Facebook and Pinterest and, and Twitter and, and, it, um, and all the Instagram and all these other things. And you can just think of like, and I think of it as almost like a word bank is like, okay, for social and social media, what are all the things that kind of are, are, are related? One of these things was not like, the other, what is that song? What are related? <laughs> now we're going to have that in our head for the rest of our lives. And then, you know, and then like when you put those concepts together, Oh, internet marketing, you know, all these other words come to mind and you almost start thinking about like, like a thesaurus or a word bank or synonyms and, and related words and connections. And so when you can craft something in on that page that, and you know, doesn't use a hundred percent of your word bank, cause that would be weird, but it allows you to make sure you covered, Oh, I'm talking about social selling. And I didn't even mention a social network or the word social network. All of a sudden you're like, oh, you know, in order for Google to understand what I'm saying, I need to mention something like this. Um, and so just thinking about kind of a broad approach to making sure that you, and by the way, when you start having like kind of this word bank situation where you're like, you're, you know, you are staring at that blank screen and you're like writing. And then all of a sudden you're like, yeah, I got nothing else. I got three sentences on the page and you know, I wanted to get 300 words. And then you're like, Oh, wait a second. Duh. <laughs> like, let's talk about, you know, how Facebook fits into this. Let's talk about how emails fits into this because those words are things that you need in there, not only for Google, but to paint a better environment of learning for your reader as well. Nice. So Holly, I want to bring this full circle. If somebody's listening and they're like, okay, I'm willing to give this a shot. What, what are like two or three tools that they should use? Like, how do you find the keywords that you should be using? How do you, what, what are some ways that people can get started really easily so that they don't have a huge bar? Cause I know so many people are just super intimidated. They're like, oh my goodness, I have to build a website. 
Yeah, so I think the main thing is, is whatever you do, just go ahead and start. And know that if you start on a free platform, you can roll that into a paid platform down the road um, pretty easily. And you'll have the money and the, and the more knowledge to do that. So just go start, like go start on Medium, go start on Blogspot, go start on anything that will get you publishing today. Um, and you, you know, you're going to be able to add your, your custom URL and all that kind of stuff to that um, later on. It's no big deal. So go ahead and get started. And then when you're thinking about keywords, like their SEO is not mysterious. SEO is not difficult. SEO is not hard. People are convincing you of that to charge thousands and tens of thousands and hundreds of thousands of dollars. You you are an expert in SEO. We all search things a million times a day. Like I don't even like type in kids activities blog. I Google my own blog. You know what I mean? So that's like, think about everything. You ask Alexa, you ask Siri, you're doing all these things around search all day. You are the ultimate search user. You already know how this goes. You know what kind of words you would use if you were trying. And you know, we've all had that situation where we Google something and it comes up with stuff that's way off base. And so we go and Google it again. And then we go and Google again until we find what we want. So the absolute best thing to start with is Google. The funny thing about Google is it tells you exactly what it wants. So if you want to capture or like dominate a keyword, or a keyword phrase, and by the way, the longer the keyword phrase, the easier it is for someone getting started to, to dominate, which makes sense because there's less competition there. But go Google it. Go Google the related phrases. All of a sudden, you now have a keyword phrase and you have related phrases. Once you settle on something that is as close, like the results are as close to what you want to create, you're going you're gonna to Google that you're gonna say, yeah, that, this is exactly kind of the stuff, just like what I'm about to create, is you're gonna go pull a lot of words from the front page of Google from that keyword phrase because those are the words that Google is telling you are related to that phrase. Light bulb, like, there you go. <laughs> Where do you think Google knows these things? Front page of Google, like if you, and, Always think about this. If you were going, and I do not have any inside information of any of these algorithms, but if I was going to sit down and write something that said, oh, related words, where would I find it? Oh, well, we, we basically created that with a search engine. And all of the top results are the ones that we think are the best already. So we want, why don't we use the words they think are important? Because we already said those are the top results. Um, and so that's where like, it doesn't have to be complicated and you don't have to buy any tools and you can start this for free this afternoon and, um, and be writing and publishing by night. That's, I, that's awesome. So you mentioned something earlier, you said about 200, 250 articles total. Mm -hmm. Where did that number come from? Why is that important? And you also said it takes about two or three months before Google is going to start to see this. So if somebody's like, okay, I'm starting today and they, they're gonna write one 300 word article a day for the next three months, right? That's yeah, so, and I don't think, like, I don't think there is a number. Like, um, I would say, you know, like, I would look at it by your niche. Like, if, if you look at your niche and you think, like, I say kids activities because, and you think about how broad that is, that's learning activities, that's crafts, that's games, that's parenting, that's like, I mean, there's just, there's holidays and, you know, Halloween and I mean, and, and then Halloween activities, Halloween crafts, Halloween costumes, how, I mean, like, it's just never ending. And my blog um, ranks for over 130,000 keywords or keyword phrases. So it's such a big thing. But if you are a coach, or you are a writer on a, uh, an expert in a niche, you don't have to have all of that. Like we're going to basically answer the questions that people have about you and your expertise through content. 
And so for most people, that may be three major subjects, you know, maybe your, which would be your, like your topics or your, um, or your categories on a blog. And then you would fill out those categories with all the information that they need to know to take that next step with you. So like, it could be as little as, you know, maybe, you know, depending on how big your niche is, maybe as little as 20 blog posts, you know, and may, you know, as large as 13,000. But, um, but yeah, I don't like, don't get overwhelmed by that because quite honestly, the, the most important content is the content that you would be making to answer basically your frequently asked questions anyway. So to answer the questions, I mean, you told me you were like, just sit down and brainstorm stuff. And yeah. that's, I mean, literally, if you start typing questions into Google, type your keywords into YouTube, see what questions people have and you can answer, just start. That's how I start with a blank page, right? Mm -hmm. If I'm going to shoot a video, what questions do people have? What can I answer? And then I just shoot some text around it and post it. Yeah. That's, I mean, that is pretty easy. And I think anybody out there can do that. It's a super low barrier to entry. Mm -hmm. Um, and like you can like a lot of these topics on the front page of Google, <laughs> Google puts people also asked and then lists a bunch of questions. And by the way, if you keep clicking those questions, keep Google keep will keep giving more. you more. I, I've never found the end of that on some of those, but like, like if, so if you have, if you know kind of your topic, I don't know, there's 20 blog posts right there in those questions. Now you don't have to take it word for word because you're going to put your own slant to it. Um, but when you do pull that into creating your content and then creating like your title or your, the video title or something like that, it's start with what would you Google to get this information? What would you type into YouTube to get this information? What would you type on Pinterest to get this information? And that's where I want you to start on your title and then make it like call to action. -y. Nice. I, I like the, uh, the hand motions. The hand motions that call it action. -y. And then, and then what you were talking about is go post that on your Facebook. You don't have to put any money behind it at first. Just see if it grabs some traction. And if people are interested in it because it is sincerely just value answering yeah. a question, then you can boost it down the road. But that's how you start driving traffic over and you actually build a relationship and build the no like trust factor. Absolutely. Don't overcomplicate this. Awesome. <laughs> like, we're also good at overcomplicating everything, but, and then don't feel bad about posting it. Like if you posted it today on Facebook and you had a conversation of like, usually these things are multidimensional. So you might say, Hey, you know, I've had this thought or maybe tell a little bit of a story that you said in that video. But then a week later you could post that same link with some thoughts about something else that you talked about or you discussed with someone. And that link could go on your Facebook page weekly for the next six months if you wanted to, is if you're just strategic about it. Just stop thinking, I've got to post something on Facebook and start thinking about what, how can I get people included in this conversation that are looking for this information? Because that's really all we're doing on social media is trying to connect with people who are looking for us. That is awesome. So Holly, if people wanted more information, if they wanted to connect with you, where can they find you and what do you offer? So um, my kids blog is kidsactivitiesblog.com and I run the Quirky Mama Facebook page. Um, and so those are, if you have kids, um, especially if they're under about 10, you'll want to hit those, those places. And then um, I do all the kind of behind the scenes um, at hollyhomer.com. And I have a coaching group um, for bloggers and I also do one-on-one -on -one coaching um, for people who are content creators. So, Awesome. Well, Holly, thank you so much for your time. This is super informative. I always have a blast talking to you. Um, you are in Texas. I know that you are going to go enjoy your afternoon and have some amazing nachos. So yes. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, maybe a taco or two. Oh, tacos too. <laughs> nachos and tacos. I Na love nachos it. and tacos. <laughs> awesome. Well, Holly, thank you so much for being a guest. To everybody listening, make sure you take action on this. I think that we are going to see moving into the future blogs, SEO, website, 
reviews are all going to come full circle because social media just can't keep going how it's going. People are looking for the next thing. And I think it's actually going to come back (laughs) to the website. Full circle. All right, guys, we will see you next time. Are you looking to scale your business, but trying to figure out how to get your message across? Well, go to storyselling.how to grab my free course that will show you how to discover everything that you need to build your business through stories. These stories work, whether it's in social media, email, or public speaking, there are five core stories that you'll learn. You'll be able to use all of them by the time you're done with this course. Again, that is storyselling.how. If you enjoyed today's episode, make sure to tune in next time.